What's going on? This is Friday Night Live. My name is Gary and we're drinking some beers. So I am excited for this lineup uh, as a hop head through and through. Um, I have a lineup here that's sure to uh, be very interesting, be very delicious. Uh, a lot of different styles of IPA and I think that, uh, you know, everyone knows that IPA is the most popular style. So we have a few different types of IPA uh, to taste this evening. Um, as always, it's Friday night. I like for you guys to join along with me. So let me know what you're drinking in the comments. And I am testing out a new setup. It is a different background this evening. I moved, which is why part of the reason why I didn't do this last Friday. Um, and so I'm in the middle of building out my studio area. And in the meantime, I'm gonna be doing this from the backyard or at least trying to. So if Wi-Fi connection is an issue, um, if you know you can't hear me for whatever reason, please comment, let me know. Any feedback is helpful, but before you do any of that, comment in, let me know, what are you drinking? Hopefully it's something hoppy because we're going through some fun hoppy beers today. Um, so yeah, as everyone knows, IPA is extremely popular and it's kind of become a bastardized uh, label of beer. You know, the IPA of old is not anything uh, what it is today. And um, I don't know, it's, it can be kind of confusing uh, when you see a hazy IPA, West Coast IPA, New England style IPA, um, and then all the different variations that go in between. Uh, you know, there's tons of them. Some have come and gone. We did black IPAs at the end of last year, and that was really interesting. Um, so, yeah, we got some fun ones here. Botman70, what's going on? Caroline, Popeye, Hello Man, what's up? Presto Polaris, Taps and Pints, Mr. 2020, what's going on, guys? Amarok's in the house. What's going on? RJ Reyes, outdoors. Yeah, wife kicked me out. <laughs> Uh, Rai J. Reyes is drinking HPB Baseball, which is a delicious sounding lager. I've never tried that one. Uh, Pops, what's going on? Uh, you're asking where's Blue? He's actually laying right inside. I will not let him out here because his barking will ruin the production. LB Brew Dude drinking a Hell is by Treehouse. Oh, that's interesting. A Hell is by Treehouse. Edgar Lopez Ramos, what's going on? B. Einhorn drinking that Stone and Alesmith collab. I have a can of that in the fridge. Sounds really interesting. Callie and Callie, what's going on? Tommy04 drinking that uh, Monkish Triple IPA anniversary. Botman drinking Sink or Swim, double dry hopped. Mr. 2020 drinking that Hop Saint IPA via the Hop Box. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. That's a great beer. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of. Uh, close it out with the hot box um you know you heard me talking about this non-stop for the past several weeks and we finally had the release day last weekend um and the main reason why it didn't go live last weekend is because jimmy and i jimmy from the glendale tap and i uh, were shooting a live tasting for the hot box and you only get that if you bought the box um and I couldn't do two beer tastings in one single day. <laughs> so um, anyways, thank you to everyone who picked up the hot box. Uh, the beers are tremendous. Uh, I can't believe we got what we did in there and hopefully we can do another one. Uh, we had a really great response and it's really fun to do it. So we shall see. In the meantime, I will pick up where I left off on the Friday night live tastings. Um, we got some great IPAs and we're gonna kick things off with a style of IPA that's uh, somewhat of a hybrid and it's somewhat of a, an emerging um, type of IPA that I'm personally really, really excited about. So first up, we have Mas Chingona. This is from Highland Park Brewery. This is their Pink Boots Society collaboration. So for anyone that's uh, not familiar with the Pink Boots Society, it is a, uh, I'm gonna butcher what this is, but it's an organization that promotes women in the brewing industry. And they are there are more and more coming into the industry and it's super awesome to see. And uh, Highland Park themselves have some great women on staff um, in their company doing some really, really cool work. And so this beer is a tribute to them. And so uh, right now is the time of year every year. I don't know if it's like Pink Boots Month or whatever, but um, but 
this is the season for Pink Boots right now. So you're gonna be seeing more collaborations uh, with Pink Boots Society. So there's an LA chapter of the Pink Boots and uh, different members of that chapter are collabing at different breweries. So Brujeria released a collaboration, uh, Pink Boots collaboration today. Um, I know Angel City has one, Trademark has one coming out. Um, 14 Cannons, I think, has one. There's there's a whole list, and uh, we'll have to post that list and, and show you guys what's going on. But this is one of the early uh, releases for this year's Pink Boots uh, collabs in Los Angeles. And this is Highland Park's first time participating in the Pink Boots collaboration series. So uh, getting to the beer here, um, this is a really interesting 7% IPA. This is what they're calling their Hazy West Coast IPA. It's a hybrid style um, really kind of riffing on and inspired by uh, what their friends at Cellar Maker up in San Francisco are doing um, in kind of merging uh, some of their uh, what they think are the best attributes of the West Coast style and the best attributes of the hazy style to put something together that um, really I think is unique and uh, personally what I think is the future of IPA um, taking the best parts of each side balancing them out in a way that makes them really drinkable and really appealing to a uh, wide variety of people. Uh, by no means is it going to replace West Coast, replace Hazy, um, but I do see this hybrid category expanding into the future. And um, yeah, this one's going to be uh, basically, um, this one's hopped with the Yakima Chief Pink Boots blend. So these collaboration, Pink Boots collaborations um, are sponsored by Yakima Chief, the hop grower, and they have a blend of hops. I have it written down here. Um, Laurel, Atanum, Citra, Sabro, and Cashmere. So um, that's featured in this beer. And uh, Highland Park also added um, some of their own hand-selected Citra hops to kind of balance all of that out. So I'm really excited to dig into this and you gotta love the artwork on the can. As always, Highland Park knocks it out of the park and just a great theme, something that um, I think we all can get behind here. Really nice. And uh, yeah, let's crack this baby open. All right. Nice looking beer. Okay, so as you can see, this is, if you're wondering what does Hazy West Coast IPA look like, this is what it is. It's um, kind of, it's it doesn't have any of that murk uh, from your traditional Hazy IPA, but it does have a nice kind of cloudiness, a little bit of, um, of just a, a slight film uh, through the beer that um, basically is, you know, an unfiltered style of beer. Uh, um, Bob from Highland Park mentioned that they don't add finings to this. So they do a lot of similar things to uh, this beer that they do to their West Coast IPA. So it's mostly uh, floor malted Pilsner malt. So you have that really, really light body um, that modern West Coast IPAs really thrive on. And then um, they don't use any findings on it. And there's a little bit of wheat in this beer as well. That's going to contribute to um, you know, some of the proteins that, that cloud up the beer a little bit, but I think that is also really um, focused on mouthfeel. So we're about to find out what that's all about. But before we taste it, got to sip it. Before I do, got to shout out Last Drop Beer Festival. What's going on, dudes? It's Friday already. Ernie Gunn, what's going on? Javi Brews is in the house. We got a lot of, a lot of good friends popping in here. So comment in, let me know what you're drinking because uh, I'm super curious and then I'm gonna the aroma on this beer is just kind of jumping out got like a really nice kind of juicy pineapple a little bit of orange you know just kind of got that like nice tropical fruit um, but it's it doesn't smell sweet it's got kind of like a little bit of like a bite to the nose um, a little sharpness to the nose that um, lets you know that this beer isn't gonna like go too much on the sweet side of things so let's give it a try really nice really nice beer um it's got a little bit of that crispness 
um, that light body from the Pilsner malt. It's got a nice soft round edge, not too soft, but it's got a softness on it um, that pairs up really, really well with a, a solid bitterness on this beer. Um, not over the top bitter by any means, but it's got like just enough of that bitter bite that you want. And for anyone just tuning in, we're drinking Mas Chingona by Highland Park Brewery collab with Pink Boot Society. So yeah, this is a really nice, uh, so far, kind of the hybrid of the West Coast and the hazy, the softness from the hazy, um, that kind of tropical fruit expression. Uh, Bob mentioned that they hop this beer like they do their hazy IPA. So big dry hop um, additions on something like this. And again, that that approach to dry hopping does also add some of some cloudiness to the appearance so that's also contributing there as well but it has a really nice bitterness on it as well so kind of taking the best of both sides this is a um this is a what hazy west coast ipa i wouldn't say this has back-end funkiness whatsoever and yeah, it's basically like nice tropical fruit not overly sweet um got some nice coconut in it as well not over the top coconut but that sabro does come through that's a that's a big hop and it's just one of several in this blend um but you do get a little bit of that coconut but again you, when you add a little bit of that bitterness and you have um kind of that dryness to the malt bill um, 100 or almost 100% Pilsner malt, um, you're going to have a really nice balance there. It's not going to be overly thick and chewy. It's not going to be overly sweet. Um, so you have kind of, like I said, like I'm saying, the best of both worlds in this glass. Really, really nice beer. This beer is 100% up my alley. Um, really like stuff like this. And again, I believe this is the future of um, the growth in, in, in IPA is um, straddling the line of balancing the two uh, extremes into something that is extremely drinkable and very delicious. Really nice beer, wow. It's gonna be hard to top that. Um, I was a little bit concerned putting that first in the lineup, but I think that that's gonna be like kind of the softest and most approachable beer that I have in the lineup today. Definitely um, on the drier side as well. Um, we're about to step up into something that's a little bit more aggressive and in your face. And then we're going to get into beers that have a little bit um, more residual sweetness on them. So let's get into beer number two. Before I, before I do get into beer number two, I'll just kind of wrap up. Mas Chingona, an excellent approach to this hazy west coast hybrid style uh, definitely recommend picking this beer up from highland park brewery there's probably not a ton of it so run out and grab it if you can uh, otherwise look out for future releases they're experimenting on this style um, i do expect more to come from them and you know it's going to be good all right so next up in the tasting Oh, Mr. 2020, Jeremiah, you must have this. This is really, really good. Um, they had it at Glendale Tap when I saw you last week and I had tasted it, but I didn't really have a moment to like really enjoy it. And then, um, I, you know, for me, information and education is so important to the beer drinking experience. Um, and Highland Park posted like a 50 minute long IGTV uh, video interview that they did with Admiral Maltines, who supplied the malt for that beer, the floor malted Pilsner malt, and um, with a couple of the folks from Yakima Chief, and just talking about um, the hops and the malt and the recipe and the style and women in beer and all that fun stuff. So after watching that, I was even more interested in digging into this beer, and I have one more can in the fridge. I uh, couldn't be happier. So we're gonna move on to beer number two here. And this is a classic. This is Hop Fu from North Park Brewing Company. Um, I know that I've had this beer before, but I think it was probably on tap at a bar when I've had a lot of different beers um, during that session. And I may have even had a, a different variation of this beer early on. This, 
This beer has a little bit of a lineage that is really interesting. So Kelsey McNair, uh, owner, brewmaster at North Park Beer Company, um, started off in the homebrew world. And this recipe is one of the most awarded recipes uh, in the homebrew world. A um, lot of metals here in both the single IPA and double IPA categories because uh, depending on the brew, um, that can be a little bit higher on the ABV back in those days. He's been brewing this beer for like 12 years or something like that. Um, long time, maybe even longer. Uh, but anyways, uh, it has a little bit of an LA um, lineage as well because Beechwood uh, collabed with Kelsey and North Park Beer Company back when he was just a, a homebrew operation and they released Hop Foo under the Beechwood label uh, several times over the years. And I forget when the last time they did it was, but um, but yeah, I mean, that's uh, it, it just goes to show like how um, decorated this recipe is, how adept Kelsey is at um, brewing the West Coast IPA style. And so he's released a lot of them um, since, you know, opening up commercially. And since the last year, them putting out a ton of cans, they're all so damn good. Um, there's one out there that they just released called Sorta Mostly Dead. That's like a Strata Citra Mosaic or Nelson. I forget the hop, the hops all in it, but it's a wonderful beer. But this is kind of like their flagship. This is like his baby. Um, and they release this on a regular basis. Um, unfortunately, this can is a little bit older. It's from, not from the last batch they released, but the one before it. So uh, we're about a couple months old on this beer. And, you know, I don't like to be a snob or anything. A couple months old is perfectly fine. Um, but it is a little bit older than I typically uh, prefer to drink my West Coast IPA. So I'm going to keep that in mind and temper my expectations on, on what I'm going to experience here. So just to give you guys a rundown on what this beer is all about. Um, we have Chinook, Simcoe, Citra, Amarillo, Mosaic, and Columbus hops. 7.5%. Um, Let's crack it open. LB Brew Dude says, just hitting its stride. I hope so. You know, I don't really know much about their operation, but it all depends on their canning, uh, on their packaging operation. And, you know, obviously percentage of dissolved oxygen plays a big role in what a beer's like two months after canning. Um, given how high quality the beers are, I have to assume that they have a high quality touch on packaging. Uh, but in the COVID days, you know, in mobile canning and getting beers out uh, into can as quickly as possible, I'm not going to fault a brewer at this point in time. Um, it's just something you, you take a note of. So um, on the appearance here, we have a really nice gold, slight orange tint to it, mostly clear, um, nice head retention on top, just like a little bit of foam kind of sitting on there. Nice little nose, uh, a little bit sweeter than the last beer we had. Bursting with orange, uh, passion fruit, a little bit of lemon peel, sweet nose. Hmm. I'm not getting any like pininess, any like kind of piney resin, um, which is what I kind of would be hoping to get a little bit on the nose on this. This does seem to lean mostly like kind of tropical fruit, not overly sweet by any means. Yeah, it's like, it's a really nice passion fruit orange. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Ooh, that is nice. That is really nice. All right, so Art Daris, this is Hop Foo from North Park Beer Company. Great beer. I feel like if you know North Park and you've had a bunch of their beers, you've probably already had this beer before because this is like one of their most popular ones and one they release on a somewhat regular basis. Um, if you like West Coast IPAs, this is going to be one of your favorite beers. Um, so dry. <laughs> this is so dry. Like I was on the nose, I was like, oh, this, this smells a little bit sweet. It's got Kind of that like sweet tropical fruit on the nose, but on the taste, man, the dryness on this beer is ridiculous. Really balanced out um, by some solid, solid bitterness too. You're 
you're getting more orange, a little bit of tropical fruit as well. Slight hint of kind of resiny dankness, um, but that is background on this beer. I was expecting to have a little bit more up front in there. Um, you know, just given that you have like Columbus, you have Mosaic, you have Simcoe, you have Chinook. Um, so you have some of these, these hops that kind of give some of that piney resin classic um, IPA, but uh, this does lean a little bit more on tropical fruit. Uh, and I'm not complaining because it's not tropical fruit sweetness. It's tropical fruit on a, on a lean, bright, dry body. Really, really nice beer. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Wow. Hop Fu, um, just a wonderfully made beer. Um, extremely popular, extremely well decorated, and you can tell why immediately. If you like West Coast IPAs, this one has to be at or near the top of your list. Delicious beer from North Park Brewing Company. What's up, Mega Man? How you doing, buddy? George Smith, what's going on? A real life buddy now. LB Brew Dude says, Party Cup is a special beer. Dude, I haven't tried Party Cup. Art Darius calls out Party Cup as well. That's, <clears throat> that's their mosaic hopped lager, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I've wanted to try it, and I've passed it over in favor of other beers so many different times. And I think I, I'm really fucking up on that. <laughs> LB Brew Dude saying, who's had hops of fury from Beechwood? I have had that a long time ago. Uh, triple IPA, I believe. And I think they're just releasing it now. I think I saw um, uh, Julian post about that. Mega Man saying Amarok Brewing collab with Chellas. Okay, I don't know if I saw that. Uh, but I do have a beer from Amarok coming up next. You got six four packs. Six four packs? That's a lot. Letta Mignoni says, Hi, Gary. Hey. What's going on? You have the same last name as me, but I don't know who you are. Cal and Cali, Monkish Triple IPA, Sacred Circles, get me right. Yeah, there you go, that'll do it, 10%. Pellow Man, sipping on that Made West Beachwood short-lived. Nice, man. I love that short-lived collab, and I love seeing Made West collab with Beachwood. That's gotta be really good. Art Darius is saying Party Cup equals Timbo status. Okay, th those are big words right there. Um, I'm gonna have to put that to the test. Got a couple cans of Timbo in the fridge. Uh, I'm gonna look out for Party Cup next time I go out to buy beer, and I'd love to try the two side by side. Um, Timbo bean, Citro Mosaic, hopped lager, and Party Cup bean, Mosaic hopped lager. So I'm down, dude, I'm down, I'll trust you. Uh, Patrick is sipping some Radiant Beauty West Coast IPA from Green Cheek. Nice, dude, that's a beautiful beer. Haven't had that in a while. Botman, the Amrock Belgian IPA is really good. Well, I'm going to have to trust you, and I'm about to find out, because uh, that's the next beer. Uh, Mega Man, I believe, in Amrock Brewing and Chellis Mundial. Nice. George Smith, saw the port rep out in the world. Been a while since had a Bressy beer. So bitter at first, we got used to it real quick. Nice, man. Yeah, I haven't had, uh, I haven't had port in a while. Paperback Brewing Orange Milkshake from Rude Boy Lifestyle. Nice. Anthony from Amarok is coming on Mega Man's podcast. Sweet. LB Brew Dude about to grab that double dry hop ghost in the machine. Dude, I'm so jealous. I'm so jealous. That is a killer beer. Oh, man, so good. All right, I'm going to wrap up this hop food. I could just like sit here sipping on this beer, talking to you guys about this one for a while. But I gotta keep things moving. I gotta keep things moving. It got dark out here real quick. Uh, Ed Ruiz, what are your favorite above 10% ABV beers? I really like El Segundo Power Plant. Yeah, Power Plant's great. Um, I think that Green Cheek does some really good high ABV beers. I think Monkish kills the hazy triple IPA game. Um, trying to think of what else I had. Uh, Aero Lodge did a really cool 10.5% um, West Coast IPA forget the name of it it was in our first hot box that was really really good too um but yeah those are just a few off the top of my head but um guys comment and let uh ed ruiz know what are your favorite 10 percent plus beers because i know you guys probably can think of some better than i can um okay so we're gonna move on to beer number three 
Uh, Art Darius, I don't really use Untapped. I have a couple accounts, like one for Hopped LA, that's just Hopped LA, and then I forget my personal one, which is the one I started out with. I don't use it though. Um, all right, so beer number three, we have a very interesting take on the IPA style, one that we haven't seen in a while. This is Belgian IPA. This is from a new, very small brewery called Amarok Brewing. Uh, these guys are gypsy brewing right now, um, and this latest batch was brewed out of Tortugo Brewing down in Inglewood, California. Great operation down there, friends of those guys, and I'm so glad to see them bringing it uh, even more local than before. This is a very, very fresh batch. Um, Anthony from Amarok uh, drove up here and delivered me some fresh beer uh, earlier today, so thank you, dude. Uh, really appreciate it, and uh, looking forward to trying the latest batch of your Belgian IPA. So this is a style that I think if you're newer to craft beer, you probably don't see or don't really know about all too often. But, um, you know, this is a, a style that as hoppy beers uh, became came into existence, some of the Belgian brewers started putting out hoppy versions of their Belgian style ales. Um, and then for me, growing up, um, or not growing up, but coming up in, in craft beer in San Diego, as I turned 21, uh, Cali Belgique from Stone was a fantastic Belgian IPA that kind of took um, some of those characteristics of Belgian malt, Belgian yeast, and then paired them with their very aggressively American hop um, styles. So that beer, I believe, is in retirement, hasn't been brewed in quite a while, and I think that this style, this Belgian IPA style, has really kind of gone sort of extinct. Um, people aren't really seeking it out. Brewers aren't really making it. Um, and so when Amarok came out and put out this Belgian IPA, um, it stood out to me. I was like, dude, you're going to come out of the gates uh, brewing a style of beer that no one's really putting out? Like, that's genius. You know, like you own the category, essentially. Um, so it's pretty cool to see that. And a really nice can of beer, um, super cool dude. And uh, yeah, gotta support locals, su support small business, and that's what this beer is all about. Um, I have had a taste of this beer. They were doing like a little tasting over at the bottle shop in Silmar, uh, but I don't remember. That was really quick and that was a, a couple months ago. So we're gonna try this latest batch of Belgian IPA and Anthony said that you know he made some tweaks to the beer and he's learning a lot about the beer um, and brewing with Joe over at Tortugo um, so this is something that he's really proud of so let's give it a try all right so we have a color and an appearance that now takes a departure from the two beers that we've had previously what's up boom hut so we have like a nice, like brilliant orange here, kind of like, at least on my end, there's, and even in the camera, there's like um, some tinges of amber in the darkness here, but in the bright uh, parts of the glass, you're getting like a really nice bright orange. Great carbonation on this beer. Um, slightly off white head with like really, really small bubbles. And then you're getting that really classic Belgian nose. Clovey, lemon peel. Yeah, it's like it's like fruity, a little bit of banana. Belgique and white wine barrels at Brewers Cafe Seattle in 2012 was peak Belgian IPA. Oh, it sounds bomb, dude. Ed Ruiz is asking if they still have the pet turtle at Tortuga. I assume so. She wasn't there uh, when I went there last, but. Um, think so yeah this is a great nose um, you're getting primarily a very dominant Belgian yeast on this um, not really getting like um, super hot forward on the nose um, but I think what it's doing is kind of contributing to the bouquet because that's what this nose is this is a bouquet of florals of citrus of you know clovey banana um, very nice, very interesting. If you're not used to Belgian uh, style beers, this is going to be a little bit different for you, but that's okay. It's okay to switch it up a little bit. It's okay to try new things every now and then. And uh, I think this one's gonna be really good. So let's give it a try. Mm. 
Yeah, some of that, um, those aromas really carry through to the palate. Incredibly floral. Um, you have a really nice kind of bright lemon peel that's contributing the citrus on this. Great medium body on this too. Um, not too thin, not too thick, not too syrupy. For me, sometimes Belgian beers, as they get up there, um, and I forgot to mention this is 7.5%, um, can sometimes get a little bit syrupy for me, um, but this is a really nice mouthfeel. Great carbonation. It's not overboard on the clovey banana thing, um, which I think is a, a flavor component that can turn people away who aren't like already familiar and into Belgian style ales. I think that can turn people away. And this minimizes that. I mean, it's definitely there. This is a Belgian yeast strain. Um, so 100% you're getting those like clovey fruity esters and phenols, spicy phenols. But um, but it keeps everything really, really well in check. And yeah, I mean, floral and citrus leads the way here. So I'm, yeah, I just, I think that it, this is a, a very different beer um, from what you're used to drinking. It goes heavy on that potpourri it goes heavy on that perfume um but it keeps it drinking light and bright like that like that lemon peel keeps it really really bright too really really nice i mean i can't say that this has converted me into a belgian beer fan or drinker i mean i don't mind belgian beers but like i don't ever crave one i don't ever reach for one i don't have any in my cellar like not like true belgian style ales um i have some sours and stuff but like i don't have any clean beer um this isn't gonna convert me to that you know it just isn't because i need something a little bit drier um but this is a really nice kind of um break this is a nice kind of like let's switch it up and drink something a little bit different. I've had too many hazies, I've had too many West Coast. Um, I still want an IPA, I still want something like aggressively hop forward, um, but in a very different way. And that's what this beer gives to you. Very interesting stuff. Um, I really like it. And definitely look out for more uh, beers coming out from Amrock. So try this. Um, I have one of their test batches in the fridge and I can't wait to try that one. That, that one's gonna be really cool. Um, and so, yeah, definitely keep an eye out for Amrock because they're coming on up, small business, cool dudes, and uh, really good beer. So try this one. Mama Mignoni, okay, now I know who you are. You caved and got an Instagram. My mom, uh, she's been holding out on Instagram for a few years now, and uh, I'm glad to see you cave. <laughs> this is where everybody is. This is the new Facebook, right? In a couple years, we'll all be off and you'll be here like, hey, why aren't you guys posting on Instagram anymore? <laughs> Andrew Lima, what's going on? Phlegian. What's going on, guys? Uh, LB Brew Dude said, that's a ballsy style to brew as a contract brewer. Props. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really really good um anthony's uh, a pretty seasoned home brewer has won some awards as well so coming off of kelsey who's kind of like legendary you know southern california homebrew status um anthony has done some done really well in competitions uh both here in california and outside and he's got some cool ideas for for his brewery but he's starting small and yeah ballsy um I'd say genius to start with this. Um, really, really cool. I know that the last or the first one or two batches he brewed of that beer were brewed at a brewery in Northern California. I'm not sure which one, but this batch that I just drank was brewed at uh, Tortugo in Inglewood. So, um, so yeah, keeping it local, and you know, you're able to you know visit the the facility more often and kind of have a little bit more hands on approach to that contract brewing approach and i think that's what you need right like especially with with a a beer like this that's going to ferment out um in a little bit more of a complex way than some other beers 
So that beer is like leaving like a incredibly floral aftertaste in my mouth. Like I just, I can't get rid of it. I should have brought my water out here, but it didn't. Um, so yeah, we're going to uh, move on to beer number four in just a second. Pelo Man's drinking Techni Flavor. We're about to do that. That's the new one, new release from Highland Park. LB Brew Dude, sipping Belgian beers at Monkish is what got me into the game. Maybe that's the idea. You, you know, you don't know. You don't know. All right, guys. Beer number four. Of course, we gotta do something hazy. We do wild style, hazy double IPA from Arrow Lodge Brewing. So let's recap this for a second. Started things out with a hazy West Coast, Mas Chingona from Highland Park Brewery collab uh, with Pink Boot Society. Then moved into one of the most decorated homebrew recipes of all time, Hot Fu. West Coast IPA from North Park Beer Company. Wow, those first two beers were amazing. Then we moved into a style of IPA that uh, has is all but extinct. This is the Belgian IPA from Amrock Brewing. Very delicious, nice, refreshing uh, break from the norm. Um, I'm not a Belgian guy, but I appreciate what this beer is bringing to the table 100%. And then last but not least, we got Wild Style from Arrow Lodge. So I remember this beer from a few years back and um, the can label shows it all. It was part of like a art contest that they did um, where this artist, I don't know if they have it on the can. They used to back in the day. Oh wait, here it is. Oh wait, no, it's not. I can't read it. Um, oh, I have a water delivery. Thank you. All right, water delivery before I jump into the last beer. So yeah, I remember this beer from a few years back when they did a an art contest. I think they did like a whole event around that. Remember beer events at, at breweries? Like not beer festivals, but just like breweries throwing like small events to celebrate their community and do like just cool different stuff. And so this is part of that release. It's called Wild Style. And this um, piece of art is painted on the wall behind Arrow Lodge. It's a really big mural, really cool. Um, and so I remember from back in those days, and this is like kind of the height of my hazy IPA um, saturation. I w most of the beers I was drinking back then were hazy IPAs. And uh, this beer came out and blew me away. This was one of my favorite hazy IPAs from, I think it was 2018. Uh, could be wrong. I didn't look I didn't do enough research to pull that out um, But I remember loving this beer um, This one sits at eight percent. It's hopped with Amarillo and mosaic So you can't help but love that can and so if you've been behind Aero Lodge and seen that mural It's super dope. So let's crack this open. Yeah, uh, Arrow Lodge, I mean, what can I say about Arrow Lodge? They kill it across so many different styles. Hazy's one of them. West Coast is one of them. Their loggers are dope. Their stout program is really, really interesting. I really like their stout program as well. Um, yeah, that like adjunct dessert, adjunct pastry stout thing, um, but not barrel aged. Really, really cool stuff. Um, they just released another one today. Um, campgrounds, one of their big ones. Ed Ruiz, great job, bro. These war on sobriety from Frog Brewery kick my ass. Be safe. Cheers, man. Thanks for joining in. That's a good brewery, too. I love Frogtown. Lolly Trom in the house. Let me do a little wave action here. Cool. Um, so, yeah, we're getting into hazies. I don't drink hazies all too often, but this is one of my all time favorites from back in the day. Back in the day, meaning three years ago. Um, and so I can't wait to dig into this one. Nice haze on that, the Aero Lodge style haze. Z Pizza Tap Room. Oh, what's going on? I need to visit you guys. Cheers to you. Great beer selection. Pelo Man was cut loose from Aero Lodge. Yes, 
Cut Loose uh, was from Air Lodge, and they were the winner of our Hazy IPA Invitational at the Glendale Tap back in 2019. Fernie Pad, what's going on, dude? So yeah, Air Lodge kills it at Hazy IPA. They kill it at West Coast Pilsner Stouts. So many good beer, so much good stuff. Um, and so this is my first time revisiting Wild Style. They're eight percent IPA with Amarillo and Mosaic. Let's see what it smells like. Juicy, super juicy. Big orange, like, I, I, I like saying that. It's, a, it's all the way through the fruit, the peel, the pith, the juice, the flesh. Like it's everything orange right here that Amarillo's just killing it. Mm, super juicy. Not getting a ton of mosaic on the nose. I'm just like really getting like pure orange. That's all I'm getting is like kind of like orange juice. <laughs> it's it's great. It's a great smell. Um, Fernie Pad, new place. Yeah. So uh, the re part of the reason why I didn't go live last Friday is I've been in the process of moving, and so I am here at my new place. I'm in the backyard. Um, temporarily until my new studio uh, space gets built out. So from the backyard, so far so good. My neighbors might think I'm an idiot, but whatever. All right, yeah, it sounds super citrusy. It sounds super juicy. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, I mean, tropical fruit 100%. Orange is dominant. Um, you're getting some nice pineapple juice in this. You're getting a little bit of blueberry in this. The body is like, is like between light and medium. You know, it's a little bit thinner on the body. Like if you're thinking hazy IPA, this is a little bit lighter on the body for sure. Drinks quicker. Like I'm about to finish this glass already. Um, it doesn't have that like creaminess that you come to expect on a hazy IPA. So this is a little bit more like on the juicy side of things um, where it's coming through like pure orange pineapple um, juice. Yeah, you're not getting a ton more. It's like orange pineapple, pineapple tropicalness um, with a light body, drinks quick, drinks delicious. It doesn't drink like beer. That's the thing is it doesn't drink like it's 8%. It doesn't even drink like it's a beer. Um, it's still delicious. You know, it's not super sweet. Like for me, um, something like this, but it has a ton of re residual sweetness, I can't get down. But something like this, um, where the sweetness is a little bit dialed back, I'm down with. So um, I like that it's relatively balanced. This is the thing with, with, you know, we started this off talking about IPA styles and the different types of IPA and where does a hazy IPA fall versus a West Coast IPA. And, you know, this is like something that I, I don't even really want to call a, a hazy IPA because it doesn't have the body that I that I personally expect from a hazy IPA. Um, it's hazy in terms of you can't see through it. It's hazy in terms of it's soft and not bitter. Um, it's hazy in terms of it's juicy and hopped like a motherfucker. Um, but the body just isn't there. So I'm, I'm just like, and I'm not sure where to put it. I like it. I like it better than I do most hazy IPAs. Um, that's why I'm trying to figure out like what you call something like this because whatever you call it, I like it. That's what I want. I want more of it. Um, so that's just me and my palate right now. Um, you guys may want a little bit more depth to the body, a little bit more heft and weight to the body, creaminess. Like this is a beer that like, that would be perfect with a lot more creaminess on it because it's got that like orange pineapple thing going on and like with some like creaminess with a bit more thickness of the body like this is the hazy ipa that everybody craves and and clamors over but uh for me it the lack of creaminess keeps it drinking dry keeps it drinking light and that's really what i want and pillow man's asking is it a sunny d light hazy honestly I wouldn't call it that, but I think if you're like really expecting um, a thick, creamy body on your hazy and you get this, you might feel that way. Uh, that's just kind of my opinion. 
But I think for me personally, like I want something like this, but I know what you're talking about, like the sunny D light hazy. It's not 100% that, but I think you could probably put it in a category close to it. And even as you get like closer to the bottom, there's, I uh, can't really see it in the camera, but there's a, there's a little bit of like translucence as well. Um, that kind of reinforces the fact that I'm saying like, this body's not super thick. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I remember loving this beer back in the day and I still really love it. And I, what I'm just trying to like figure out is like why I like it compared to what I don't like about hazy IPAs now. Um, so yeah, uh, Botman, uh, my boy James there makes a good point. Thick and creamy equals full and bloated. And that's how I feel about hazy IPAs too. Like I can't, like maybe I have one, I don't know. Like I have like, I have some really good hazies in the fridge and I get some really good hazies from time to time. And I'll drink like two or three sips and I'll be like, okay, that's really good, but I don't want this beer. And so I dump it and I move on to the next because why force yourself to drink a hazy that's gonna fill you up and it's not gonna be like what you actually want. Um, so that's kind of my opinion here in like craft beer 2021 is just like, there's a lot out there. You're gonna have to experiment. You're gonna open some beers that aren't what you're expecting. And uh, sometimes you're gonna love it and sometimes you won't. And in this situation, I love this beer. I'm so glad too, because this was, um, I would say, I think this made one of my, my best beers of 2018 list. Um, if it didn't, then it made 17. I'm not really sure. It's made one of them. Um, and so I've loved this beer in the past. Oh, my boy, my boy Josh just joined. What's going on, dude? Thirsty in the South Bay. Um, yeah, so this is one of my favorite beers and uh, it continues to be a delicious beer. If all hazies were like this, I'd drink hazies. That's a good way to sum it up, right? Like if all of them were like this, this is, I would drink hazy IPA. Uh, Brewer Brit, love how much I learned about the way hazies taste on here. <laughs> yeah, you don't drink any, right? Um, I'm the wrong person to learn about hazies from. I just, I'm out. I, I trash them too much. T2 do 2 DM. Bro, I don't know what your name is, but I can't pronounce your username. I don't, I, it might be time to change it. Um, I don't do more than two hazies per sitting. I, I agree. Like, it's just, I can barely do one. Pop says, bring the hazies to Pops. I will, man. I will. <laughs> he loves the hazies. <laughs> All right. So that's the four beers for tonight. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with just a quick rundown of what we went through. And I, at the end of this, I'm going to pick which beer I would choose to drink the rest of the night. What beer is my favorite? Is basically what I'm saying here. Uh, this is going to be difficult. I don't know what the answer is, but I'm hoping to figure it out as I run through this. So we kicked this IPA tasting off uh, with Mas Chingona. This is a uh, hazy West Coast IPA from Highland Park Brewery, 7%, collab with Pink Boots. This is Highland Park Brewery's uh, experimentation with this hybrid West Coast I hazy style. Um, and I am 100% here for it. Uh, next up, beer number two was Hop Foo. This is a West Coast IPA from North Park Beer Company. Uh, one of the most decorated homebrew recipes of all time. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful, delicious, delicious West Coast IPA. If you like West Coast IPA and you haven't had this beer, change that immediately. Um, then third up, we have Amrock Brewing's Belgian IPA. Just a completely refreshing take on uh on an ipa with the belgian style here that we just never see anymore really like this beer recommend you guys grab it um and then last but not least just had arrow lodge this is wild style eight percent hazy double ipa really delicious hazy not what you're expecting if you like that like thick 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 creamy haze don't buy this beer just leave it for me um, so yeah, I am, I'm seeing you guys kind of throw out which one you think it's going to be, um, uh, and this is difficult for sure. It's between the first two for sure. Um, Pops asked, what does mas chingona mean? It means like, isn't chingona like fucker or something like that? 
I don't know, like, big fucker or something like that. But, like, female version? I don't really know. I don't know what chingona means. Uh, but it's a it's a curse word, right? Um, <laughs> so I, I so I watched the video for Highland Park and Blanca explained the name. Um, I don't think she defined it, but it's a curse word that like in today's day and age, they're uh, taking back the word to yeah. So Brewer Brit's got it. Strong ass woman, badass. There we go, badass. Okay, sorry, I got that wrong originally. Um, yeah, so badass, strong ass. Um, and then the artwork really kind of depicts that too. Super cool. I'm all for it. And uh, before I put it down, this is the winner here. This is the one I'm picking. This Mas Chingona Hazy West Coast IPA is what I'm all about. Um, to be fair, I am going to drink the hot food as well. I, I would say, I would say it's 1A and 1B right here. These two beers are super, super good. Um, the other two are really, really good as well. Hey, if my wife lets me, maybe I'll drink all four. All right. <laughs> she's watching this and she's probably like, nah, dude, nah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. It was great to do this again with you guys. Um, I will be doing it again next week. And uh, in the meantime, Always drink indie, drink local, uh, buy some Pink Boots beer, uh, support Pink Boots Society, and uh, buy some of these beers. Highland Park Brewery, North Park, Amarok, got to do that. And a little bit of Arrow Lodge too. Good stuff. Um, if you guys have any questions, suggestions on the show, on beers you want to try, on breweries you want to check out, uh, definitely hit me up via DM. I'm trying to, uh, I don't know, make some changes to Hopped LA in the short term. Uh, as Brewer Britt said, I do have a baby coming. And so I do have to figure out how do I navigate Hopped LA when that happens. But, um, you know, if you have any suggestions, if there are um, things that you love about what we do or that you're like, you, I wish you guys did this, um, please let me know because things will change very soon. But one thing won't change, always drinking indie beer, always drinking local beer, and enjoying the shit out of it with you guys. Peace out. Have a good night.